Hey guys, it's Gary. Um, haven't done a video for a while. And, um, oh, that's Brainy in the back. You've seen him if you've watched one of my last videos. Um, and, uh, actually, you know, these guys are all here because it's, it, it's Halloween season. So, Woody's here as well. Okay. Woody's here. Um, for Halloween. My last um, couple videos I've done have been, well, it's my favorite time of year. Um, it, it's Halloween season, and um, I kind of did everything Halloween-y that I have to do. Um, unless I was going to do uh, movies, which I could do, but it's kind of outside the scope of, um, I think, the interest of pretty much everybody here. Um, and I kind of comp compartmentalize that as well, oddly enough. Uh, my main focus is music, but I have um, literally hundreds of, of DVDs, mostly horror movies, believe it or not. Um, and um, more than half of them are not American. Um, British, European, Spain, Germany, some Japan, things like that. But, I, you know, who would be interested? I'm not I'm not too sure. Um, and, um, uh, honestly, I don't get the enjoy, uh, enjoyment that of talking about the movies as much, um, as music. Music is more of a discovery. A movie is more, uh, casual, you know, it's, it's kind of, movies are kind of just lay back and enjoy them, you know, type of thing. Uh, I think the music, uh, you invest more in it. Anyway, we're about a week away from Halloween. And I have been hesitating doing another video only because I want to do something uh, Halloween themed, but I did run out of subjects, kind of. Um, I'm still glad that I did the uh, videos I did earlier uh, on the Halloween music, especially, because for those folks in the VC who, who enjoy, that's probably most people in the VC, um, still enjoy going to the old fashioned record stores, wherever they may be. Um, and, and shopping. Um, I specifically wanted to show those earlier um, compilations, you know, things things like the movie music and things like Witch's Brew, which are classical music things, um, so that if, if people were interested, they could get, um, you know, and they were going to go out to stores, um, they might stand a, a chance of seeing some of those things in the stores because it was before Halloween. Um, seems like in the, in the stores, as I mentioned in my video, a lot of those uh, movie-themed Halloween CDs, the classical Halloween CDs, even though there's really not much Halloween-y about the music, it's classical music, uh, a lot of those only, the, the record shops pretty much only put out it at Halloween time. They would pull them back in their, in their bins until next, next year's Halloween. Um, so I wanted to show those early so that if people were interested, they could go out. And indeed, uh, the audiobooks one, it seemed like uh, a couple people in, that watched my videos were interested in uh, maybe trying to find some of the, the audiobook stuff, which definitely only, for whatever dumb reason, only comes out at Halloween. Um, and it seems like, seems like those party stores, very sadly, and I haven't gone myself, um, if I'm out, and I haven't gone out a whole lot, um, except for to do just a couple food shopping things and laundry things, um, though still, I have another week. If I'm out by any of those party stores, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to check in. But it seems like they stopped carrying CDs, uh, which just amazes me. You know, But I did see something on the news. Um, this isn't any help to any of us. Well... Except for Andrew, except for I'm not sure where it is, Andrew. Um, there is, I think it's in California, but I don't know where. There is a, a store called a Halloween store, I believe is the name of it. Saw it on the news. I believe it's in, it's somewhere in California. I have to guess it would be the LA area. Um, a store called a Halloween store, but it's open all, all year long. Um, it was a Halloween specialty shop. And uh, they just leave they just leave the place open all year long, which would be great for somebody like me because you know I'd be in there. 
Um, and I'm betting maybe some is a huge, huge place too. I'm willing to bet that um, some place like that might still have the CDs and the audio books and things like that. Now, some of them you could find online, but those Blue Diamond audiobook things, I don't know. I bought them, what, 2005, I think I found a receipt for them. Uh, and they seem they seem gone now, which is very sad. I can't, I did another search for them online. I really can't find anything. Um, I, I found one or two very small references to the company, but no product listings. Anyway, uh, despite all my yakking here, uh, I've got Mr. Mr. Brain or Brainy there. I've got Woody here, and I've got the, those aren't tiki lights this time. Those are voodoo lights. Ooh, voodoo faces on them. You can't see the faces. I have a close-up photograph, and um, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll put that as the as the icon picture, so you can see what the faces on the tiki lights actually look like. Um, uh, I have a. You know, I was really stumbling about what to do a video on. I was still going to try some Halloween-themed things. Um, there is some electronic music that's kind of creepy and scary sounding um, that I was considering doing a video on. Um, but I kind of really couldn't find that much to fit the bill, except for something like Wendy Carlos, which a lot of people may be familiar with. Um this is uh, Beauty and the Beast, an original work. Um, got some pretty creepy stuff on there. Um, kind of a nice CD. I haven't listened to it in a whole bunch of years. Um, but I, I didn't find much or much else besides um, things like the Tangerine Dream and uh, the Manuel Gotching album that I mentioned that are technically not Halloween albums but have kind of creepy music that I associate with Halloween. Uh, so this is more of a... Well, kind of an update, one more update, because I, I did a video a while back about my love of the old Verve compilation series that started with the ad, pretty much with the advent of CDs uh, around uh, 86, 87. Um, I got another one. I got a George Benson Compact Jazz, which is um, basically stuff from two out, two album, well, three albums. There's one thing from a Jimmy Smith album on here that George Benson played on. And uh, two things from Benson from uh, two albums, uh, only selections from two albums besides the one Jimmy uh, Smith thing. And albums were both recorded in 1968. So uh, a good eight to nine years before his first mainstream success with Breezin and uh, This Masquerade. Really good stuff. The thing I like about this is um, one of the albums is called Giblet Gravy, which has been available on CD for a long time. But he had an album out called Goodies, which sounds like a compilation in itself, but oddly enough, it wasn't. Which, for some reason, the record label never put out on CD. Um, so I'm going about trying to compile my own digital version of goodies by picking up um, the various compilation CDs that have a track sprinkled here and there. Um, and actually, all of the tracks from the album, except one, one really nice track of orchestra, orchestra with Benson's guitar, with no rhythm section, a track called Julie, I think is the name of it, is the only track from goodies that never got released on a CD compilation anywhere. Uh, I found it online, I found it on YouTube, and it's beautiful. Um, why, why they wouldn't stick that on one of their compilations? But Verve did another, tough, like three, comp three or four compilations of Benson's early, early stuff. And uh, most of the tracks off that Goodies album from 1968 are spread out uh, amongst three different compilations. So I have those all on my wish list, so just so I can compile Goodies. Um, but nice, nice playing, nice early playing by George, and another nice cover design. You know, with the black and white photos mixed in with the color stuff. I just, uh, you know, I just, I just love the way they, uh, the cover designs on these. So I have another one. Um, now today's main topic, even though it took 10 minutes to get there, um, I kind of had to take a, a page out of Carm's book. Um, every once in a while, Carm will do a video where he, he, um, he kind of just grabs a stack of certain types of CDs of uh, things that he's got, you know, there, there's usually a unity uh, to them. There's a certain, um, stylistic thing going on or maybe record label or something uh, that they have in common um, 
And for lack of, of anything else, I decided to do that today. And I'll be able to, to add to this because this is just a, I, I grabbed a batch of CDs that these happen to just reside together, but I, I'm sure I have more that would fit this bill. And that is, um, I'm just, I'm getting slightly distracted by Brainy flashing in the background. Um, and of course, Woody's here as well. Uh, what I did is I grabbed a stack of CDs on various labels of kind of fairly obscure, um, elect mostly electronic music. Um, all of it was um, released on CDs in the early CD era, so it was all late 80s stuff, uh, things that were new at the time. Um, and most of them are pretty obscure on, on labels. I don't, I don't know if any of uh, I think one of them is on Columbia record label, which should be the only thing that, uh, only label that's still around. Most of these are obscure. I hadn't heard of the artist before I bought the CDs. And as a matter of fact, probably the only reason I have them is because they came out so early in the CD era. And I fell in love with those shiny silver discs, uh, immediately upon getting them. And I just had to have more. I couldn't get enough. Um, so the, the CD thing coming out, um, combined with, uh, the new age thing really hitting, uh, you know, a lot of the artists that fall under new age music, like Evangelist or something like that, um, were around for a, a long time, but a lot of them really only came, uh, about, or at least got record contracts, um, you know, in the late eighties when this whole, when the CD era started and then when this whole new age thing came around. So I had two things going on. I had the fact that I love CDs and I didn't have enough of them yet. Um, in the late 80s at this time, and this whole new age thing where a lot of artists were getting signed and imports were coming in from other countries and stuff like that. Um, so most of these CDs, I think, um, I got at, at a fairly reasonable budget price. Um, and they were blind buys by artists that I didn't know, um, and they just looked interesting, so I bought them. So I thought I'd show a, a handful of those. I, I, I have I have more, but I, I think... Um, I think some of these, like, I've got a bunch of things on the Laserlight label. Uh, these, these are pretty much all I have on Laserlight that fit that mold. I have a jazz things on Laserlight. Um, let's see. Let's just get started here. Most of these, uh, you know, there's, there's not going to be too many people that you've heard of in this video. Here's something that I saw an interesting little thing. I knew nothing about them. The Beamer Project. I have two albums by them. This is on a record label, Sphere Records. Um, there's Sphere Records and Allegiance Records are the names on the back. Um, 1987 for, for this one, Sidetrack. I like the cover. Um, I think Carm would like that cover. It's like a kind of like a magic castle or something like that in Sedona or something. Um, and then the Beamer Project point of departure. And this one I think is 88. Yeah, 88. First one was 87. This is 88. Um, very digital sounding. I tell you, this is uh, only one of these even lists uh, musician credits, really. Uh, one of them just lists the guy's names and doesn't say what they play. And um, the point of departure album. Uh, again, on Sphere Records, um, does list two musicians, and I guess they play everything. Um, John Wilson on drums and percussion, uh, recorded in Prescott, Arizona, oddly enough. I just, it's odd because I thought that other cover looked like it could be Arizona. I didn't know that it was actually recorded in Arizona. Um, recorded in Prescott, Arizona, 87, 88. John Wilson, drums and percussion. Joe Robertson, keyboards and guitars. Um, and that's all it says. These are very two very short CDs. I think these might have been budget things. These are like 35-minute CDs. Very digital sounding. I, you know, I, I haven't played them recently. From what I recall, I, I, I don't think there's acoustic drums. I think it's very early sounding elect, electronic drums, um, which, you know, tend to not sound great. Um, they don't have the depth of acoustic drums. Um, but all, all very le early electronic sounding uh, digital keyboards. Um, this this band was um, 
this is the only two things I ever saw or heard from them. Um, they, you know, most there's only one song that goes over five minutes on here, um, and there's one one ten minute track on this one, the one that I said looks like it's from Sedona. Um, but most of the tracks are, are are shorter tracks. Well, actually, no, I lie. I lie. This one is longer tracks. Five minutes, eight minutes, 15 minutes, and 10 minutes. This one is all short tracks. Um, kind of not, um, you know, very early digital keyboards. Sounds like um, a drum, um, it actually sounds like drum machine, but there's a drummer on here, so I'm guessing it's electronic drums. Not avant-garde, not heavily electronic, really. Sounds more like, um, you know, uh, instrumental... Prog, almost. There's this little prog element there. Um, nothing avant-garde, you know, noticeable chord changes. I wouldn't say it's even um, as out there as like the early Patrick O'Hearn things on private music. Um, it's much more kind of accessible than that. Um, enjoyable, but not a, not a difficult listen at all. Uh, wouldn't describe them as being spacey, but it's just one of those Sphere records. I remember seeing the logo before, so I probably have other things that um, are Sphere records. But um, one, one is just Sphere. This one is just Sphere records. This one is Sphere Allegiance. Um, I don't know that these record labels exist anymore. I'm sure the band doesn't exist anymore. Um, so it's just one of those one of those oddities. And I thought I had, you know, I thought I had saved the... Uh, I thought I had saved the um, price tag, but I can't find it. Because I seem to remember buying a bunch of CDs that were $5.99 and $6.99. I mean, new at the time. Um, somebody else. Oh, this is a good one. This is the one that I meant to put in the background, and I didn't, damn it. Um, Harry Winkler, guy I know nothing about. Why did I buy it? Uh, I do have the price tag on this. It was, well, this is Laser Light. So everybody's probably familiar with Laser Light. Not sure if they're still around anymore, but they had hundreds of classical music, jazz, new age things. This is, this I really, really like. Um, it was 549 at the time that it came out. This is on laser light. This has a 1991 date on it, but the recording date is February, March of uh, 86. So it was something that maybe was sitting in the can that got released, you know, five years later. Um, thing I like about it is this guy, Harry Winkler, I know nothing about it. I have no other CDs by him. Uh, apparently, he's a keyboard player, plays totally solo. Um, Roland, Super Jupiter, so it tells you the period that it's from Yamaha DX7. These are all uh, eight, uh, late 80s synthesizers. Um, plays a drum machine. There are only two pieces on here, and this is the one I went to put in the background and I chose something else. Um... Only two tracks on here. Each one is 23 minutes. Um, now, I haven't looked recently. This is from 91. Uh, I haven't looked recently, but there were used, at very least, copies of these things floating around um, fairly cheaply a couple years ago when I looked. Maybe not even a couple years ago. Um, I recommend this one. It's not, again, not avant-garde, but um, I liked it. I remember liking it very much. You know, I make these videos, and... Um, I should be listening to these things before I do the videos. And inevitably, I end up listening to them after I do the videos and then think, oh, I should have said this or that. But um, then it would take me another you know, week or two to listen to all these. And, so, and then probably the video would never get made. Um, here's one. This, this one is uh, CBS. CBS. This was another blind buy, but... Folks, you may have seen this because this was all over the place. It's a CBS record. Uh, CBS didn't really jump on the New Age bandwagon too much. I knew nothing about the two artists involved in this album. It just looked really interesting. And I took a shot because this was like a full price $14 CD, however much it was. Uh, Spirits of Europa by two artists, um, Born Jason Lind and Stefan Skedja. Uh, Stefan Skedja is a piano player, acoustic, classically trained piano player. I seem to remember, I did recently go on and try to um, learn a little bit about these artists. Uh, and it seems like, um, and Bjorn Jason Lind is a um, flute player who plays synthesizers as well. It's just these two guys on there. Um, 
I think there's there's some drum machine. Somebody somebody played drum machine on like one or two tracks. Very minimal, um, thankfully, because it's you know a little bit of a dated sound. Beautiful album if you if you can find it. Pretty sure it's not in print anymore. But again, because it was CBS Records and released in the U.S. at least for U.S. listeners, there's probably um, a whole lot of used copies floating around still. This is really really beautiful. Very well recorded, mostly acoustic piano. Um, based with a lot of synthesizer in there, uh, played by the second member, played by Bjorn, and beautifully recorded flutes. Um, I believe they recorded this duo as a duo. They, they did apparently uh, a lot of albums separately um, in Europe that never got released over here. I, I think I found that they did one other album together, but it was not released in the U.S. It's very hard to come by, and it's been out of print for a long time. Um, I would love to get it, though, if I ever can can find it, based on this. I guess that second album they did together probably didn't warrant a, a U.S. release because um, maybe this one didn't sell that well. I just remember I kept on coming across this in the stores. Um, and at the time, New Age was so new that there weren't really too many established artists in there. And I took a chance. And I don't even know if they list the instruments on the back. Not sure if they list the instruments in the back. This is real pretty. You don't have to be a fan of electronic music. Um, you, you you could slightly tell that maybe both musicians have some classical training, probably. For you know, this is all original music. Uh, it, it has that Euro classical. Uh, if ECM went a little further down that road, this almost could be this almost could be an ECM thing. Thinking of like a Rainier Bruning House or something like that, maybe without without drums, without a rhythm section. Really beautiful album. I highly recommend it. I'd be surprised if you didn't like it. Um, too bad it didn't do better, and maybe we could have seen some more releases. I really have to go scampering, looking uh, to, tr to try to find this other album they did together, uh, these two from the same time period. This was uh, 89, I think. The sun is going down on me as I speak. Well, 86. This is really early. Yeah, this came out in 86. Here, here's, a, here's another guy. What label is this on? RHC Records. I don't even friggin... It, it, looks like it's, it looks like it's a Canadian label. RHC Productions. No record label, so I guess the... Oh. Oh, it's the art. It looks like it's the artist's own label. Um, Canadian. I have I have another C at least one other CD by this gentleman, Robert Haig Coxon or Coxon, um, synthesizer player, pretty much all synthesizers. I have another album by him that wasn't in the in the stack with this one. I you know they used to all be together, but when I moved, everything got all screwed up because I know I have one with a green cover. I don't know why I remember it has a green cover by him. Um, Pretty synthesizer stuff, Canadian label, apparently. Uh, RHC label would be his initials. So I guess he just released his own stuff. I don't know how it got in stores because um, I, I actually remember I got this through uh, either BMG or Columbia Record Club. Uh, but um, it doesn't have any of their stamps on there. Oh, yeah, he, he composed something called the Crystal Silent, Silence Trilogy. And I remember the other CD I had by him is called Crystal Silence something or other. Exquisite melodic orchestrations blending acoustic instruments with rich synthesizer textures and ethereal sound of a giant sacred bowl create an optimum setting for total relaxation. It's more of a mellow, laid-back, pretty New Age album. Uh, again, nothing real um, difficult about it. R.H. Coxon. But, um, and again, ten, 10 shorter pieces. There's one nine minutes on here, but there's a lot of pieces that are three minutes on here, too. Really nice. Um, you know, it, it, it's an easy, it's kind of easy to ignore if you don't like it. Um, easy to get into, not difficult electronics at all. I wish I could find the other one by him that I have. Uh, Back to Laser Light. Laser Light went nuts in the, in the late 
80s, early 90s. Here's another one from 91. Jeff Johnson, No Shadow of Turning. I know nothing about Jeff Johnson. Um, but it was a laser light thing. So, oh, 599 is the sticker on here. I did put the sticker on. Short, again, shorter pieces. Um, very short. There's a lot of two-minute, three-minute pieces on here. Pretty acoustic things, from what, from what I, I remember. Acoustic piano uh, and some electronic instruments, but not electronic specifically album. Um, not a bad little thing, but a lot of these laser light things went for very much the same sound. And you might not even be able to tell one artist, to be honest, from the other, because they looked for um, kind of very homogenous type of thing, like some acoustic piano mixed in with some electronics, but not a wild divergence between album to album or artist to artist, I really, I should say. More laser light. Richard Souther, or Souther, who's um, got a lot of albums out. He's somebody that you may have heard of out of this whole group. He's, he's somebody uh, that you may have heard of because he continues to, he's an American guy. Again, this came out in 91. So in 91, apparently Laser Light went out and bought up a whole bunch of, some of these albums I understand are reissues of albums that were released on smaller labels. And um, when the New Age thing happened and the CD thing came around, Laser Light apparently went and snatched up the rights to a lot of these and re-released these. Um, and again, well, this one's 549. Um, they're very thin on credits, though. Um, there's usually no period of, uh, there's no date of recording on these. Um, and as far as the instruments go, it just says multiple keyboards, percussion, and computer musical instruments played by Richard Souther. Um, and that's, that's it. There's not a lot of... Uh, there, there's a credit for a guy who does synthesize a program. So I guess Richard's around. I think he's, I think he's a friend of mine on Facebook, actually. He still records albums. And I do have something more um, recent of his as well, not on Laser Light. Um, he's also done, if he's, the, if he's the guy I'm thinking of, Richard, he's also done a lot of religious themed albums, which I'm not, you know, I'm not religious. I'm not a, a fan of. Uh, he's done a lot of uh, like instrumental versions of Christian hymns and things like that. So um, before you buy his stuff, unless you're a fan of that, you really have to look to see what's on the album. Um, apparently, he's a fairly religious guy. Um, this is another one from... See, this got released in 90. But from what I, I seem to recall reading... He has, he's got a web page or something somewhere. Um, and again, 549. Uh, again, nice keyboard instrumentals. It's basically keyboard instrumentals, um, no guests, no rhythm section. N nice stuff. And I've got um, right right in the stack that I have sitting on top of my computer here, I've got one of his more recent ones, as a matter of fact. Uh, not on Laser Light, on his own label. That's very nice and quite different from this. These are all um, fairly short songs, short pieces. Um, all keyboard instrumentals, you know, some acoustic piano mixed with electronic instruments uh, very nice very mellow nothing avant-garde uh, if you put it on people would either just ignore it and it would blend in the background or they certainly wouldn't say what the hell are you listening to you know like you were listening to some incredibly avant-garde electronic music it wouldn't be like that um again short pieces sure but very very nice stuff very good stuff uh the thing that i bought of him that was more recent that's only a few years ago you know i pull it off it's right on my shelf right, right where i'm looking but um can't see it. If I could, if, if I knew exactly where it was in the stack, I'd pull it down. I seem to remember, I, I think it was even a, some kind of soundtrack that he did. Much more electronic. That's some really nice electronic work, though. He might be the one guy here that you've heard of out of this stack. Um, another laser light group. Um, Horizon T. White Clouds. This is uh, a mix of I say smooth jazz, but it's not fusion. Like a, a, a softer fusion, a almost prog guitar um, with keyboards. Um, so it's like a, or maybe like a little bit like early Shadow Facts, maybe even. Um, if you're familiar with you know Shadow Facts around the 
the dreams of children and too far to whisper and albums like that. Um, a bit like that, you know, jazz edge, electric guitar edge. Um, but this is Horizon T featuring John Parsons. I have no idea who John Parsons is. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to pull out the book that I don't think they even list the band members in here. Recorded in 88. Oh. Uh, it's funny because they list the instruments, but they don't list the band members. Thanks. Um, here we go. Yeah, it's weird. They got The band has two guitarists and two keyboard players. Uh, that's odd. H.G. Wagner and Klaus Lohmer on keyboards, and John Parsons and Michael Rausch on guitars. Um, I don't know any of those, but somehow John Parsons got uh, got his name tagged on front featuring John Parsons. Uh, actually, it says on the back featuring John Parsons, not on the front. But nice. Uh, again, short instrumentals. Um, keyboard, I think there's like digital drums, sample drums on there. Um, cause there's definitely a rhythm section, you know, there's bass on there. Uh, it must be all coming from the keyboard players. Um, nice little band, never saw anything else by them, I don't think. And again, you know, from 88, so, uh, oddly enough, a long time ago now. Let's see what else I got. This is actually running a bit longer than, um, this is running a bit longer than I anticipated I would be. The one that I'm playing in the background that you probably can't hear, um, I thought I had more on this label. I may, actually. Here's a record label out of Germany called Beyond. Beyond Records. Album called Visions Atlantis. This uh, is two guys um, that I've never heard of before. German label. Beyond, uh, uh, again, Allegiance. I think Allegiance because they distributed another label here. They must have been a distributor in the U.S. maybe for um, labels that were based in, in Europe maybe because Allegiance, didn't they distribute the uh, Beamer Project too? So here's two guys, Christian Bueller and Helg Schroeder. Apparently both keyboard, both synthesizer players. Uh, this is much more like... Um, you know, the, 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 the electronics of Klaus Schulz and Tangerine Dream. Uh, there's a few short pieces on here, a few four minute pieces, but there's 11 minutes and eight minutes and uh, an 18 minute and 45 second piece on here. I think I did see, um, not even necessary. I saw online somewhere a catalog or something like that where they had another album out, but I couldn't get a hold of it. It was out of print. This has an 87 date on it, so this came out really early in the, in the thing. This is nice. It's all, all electronic keyboards. This is definitely more of a German, uh, European um, sound that harkens back to, to, to the uh, early to mid-70s um, Klaus Schultz, Tangerine Dream. Maybe um, slightly more orchestral in nature, actually. It's very electronic sound, but it's more orchestral in nature. Maybe like a Vangelis would be at times. Um, yeah, it lists, it only lists all keyboards. So, um, I'm guessing it's all, it's all synthesizers on here, uh, even though they sample acoustic instruments. So every once in a while you'll hear, um, something that sounds maybe a bit like, um, an acoustic instrument, but apparently it's all from the sampled keyboards. They were recorded in 1986, only credited to these two guys. This is a, this is a good album. And this is the only one that I've played recently. I'm actually playing it in the background as well. Um, there's this whole, you know, th so this was, this was actually released in 87. There's this whole story inside that doesn't claim to be fictional. So it's one of these things that said that there's a, a magic date that um, we're going to, that, that I guess the world is going to receive a message of the eternal now. And we'll be receiving this message in California in 1988 on uh, August 8th, 1988, 8888. Well, I, that time has obviously come and gone, 27 years ago. Um, the message urged us to modify the continuum immediately, or a world catastrophe would be unavoidable. We prepared ourselves for an astral flight, took off and arrived safely in Los Angeles on the day 8888, welcomed by a group of initiates 
in an ashram in, in Malibu. Um, you know, this is, whoo, you know. So we've got, so we've got an, an, an amazing um, fictional, I'm sure, story um, about uh, visions of Atlantis from these two. I wish they would have given us a bit more information. Well, they told us who plays on the album roughly when it was recorded. Um, but I liked it enough to try to seek out um, another album that they made that I think did get uh, released here, but I don't, I don't think I ever saw it in the shops. It was one of those things that came and went before I could get my hands on it. Um, fairly nice and not as dated sounding as you would expect. Um, they use some really good synthesizer samples on these. I have one more because this is going much longer than I thought. And, and this is a label that oddly enough, I thought I had so many more things on and I probably do, but it's, it's maybe not electronics. I'm not sure. Now here's a label that I know Carm has shown and Carm has a whole bunch of things. I wonder if he caught this one, a Sonia Gaia, uh, which oddly enough was out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was surprised th at that. Here's an eight, 1986 recording. I bought this out of a mail order catalog long before the internet. Green, an album called Green. Um, it was one of those uh, new age mail order catalogs that you could get a lot of this music in in the late 80s before the internet came around. Um, and I just read the description of the album. I had never heard anything of it um, or from it. It's by somebody never heard of, and I haven't found anything else by since. Hiroshi Yashimura, Yashimura, Japanese gentleman, I'm sure. Uh, Sonia Gaia, just an album just called Green. Saw so it in a catalog, and the catalog was full of artists and music I'd never heard of. And I kind of, I wouldn't say randomly, but I just remember picking out a whole bunch of things and waiting like two months for it to arrive, because mail orders catalogs were very slow back then. And um, quite an interesting album. You know, this is one that actually would have actually hit the record shops. I didn't realize it was on Sony Guy, I think, when I ordered it out of the mail order catalog. And the mail order catalog had a lot more obscure labels and things that you wouldn't find in the stores. Um, if I had realized it was on Sony Guy, I probably would have gone and looked in the, in the physical shops for it. I, I bet you it showed up there. And I'm wondering if you have this car because... This is really good, but I didn't, I say I didn't like it at first, but it's the quietest album of this type probably that I have. Um, with electronic art, it's all electronic keyboards. And there's some nature sounds mixed in, which I'm not usually a fan of, but they work in this case. Um, and the interesting thing with it is, uh, usually in electronic keyboards, you know, when one artist is doing all the stuff himself, um, there's a tendency to do a lot of overdubbings and make the sound very full and you have six and eight keyboards going on. But there's a lot of very quiet moments in here where there's just a single keyboard playing uh, a series of notes or sustaining a chord or something like that. And it's very quiet. They didn't intentionally, or he didn't intentionally fill up the sound a whole lot. Um, and at first I'm like, well, gee, that's kind of rather simple. But, you know, upon further listenings, because most artists were really going crazy with the keyboard overdubs, um, you know, especially the one man projects. And these things are there's some things that are just like one keyboard. Maybe there'll be some nature sounds in the background, not on all tracks, on a couple here and there. Um, and, and that's it. Uh, recorded in his private studio by Hiroshi Yashimura, Yamaha DX7, the big keyboard of the time, Roland. Uh, use a computer. It's got 1986 date on it, so it must have been recorded in 85 or 86. Um, yeah, I do, I do have a bunch of other uh, Sony Gaia things. Uh, Michael Jones, Eric Tink Tinkstad, and uh, Nancy Rumble. None of the none of these are electronic artists. Michael Guinness, Spencer Brewer. So yeah, I, I do have some other things. But this one you may have missed because it's the only uh, album uh, I've, I've never seen another um, album anywhere released by this artist. Very quiet, very laid back. This would be a good one to, to fall asleep to. I mean that in the best way possible. Um, very, very quiet stuff. And not, not a propensity to, oh, let me just, uh, something I'm guilty of. Let me just pile one. I can do this. So let me put six and eight keyboards on here and just fill this all up. And uh, But at first it was a little off-putting because I, um, 
thought, well, gee, he should have put more stuff on there. Uh, maybe I didn't get it at first. But now I really appreciate this album. And again, I think I looked on like Amazon, which is a good place to look. Um, I think there were used copies still around. It's quite old now, and I'm sure it didn't sell a whole lot. But this one is really good. Uh, and I know, Carm, if you missed this one, buddy, um, this might be one that, that you might want to look to pick up, and I'm pretty sure you could probably at a decent price. Um, Sonia Gaia did have good uh, recording quality on their stuff as well. So um, that was just a stack of kind of oddities, um, obscure things, mostly out of print. I think this is all out of print. Um, but um, I think, you know, for the most part, worthwhile stuff. Certainly some of the early, some of the things like the Beamer Project certainly have the, the stamp. Oops, just dropped a whole bunch of them. Uh, certainly have a stamp of the, the late 80s digital sound on them very much. Um, still enjoyable. Ah. But um, this one, this one I highly, rec you know, this that one I highly recommend. There's, there's, there's a few that I really... Really dug the Richard Souther things, which may still be out there, out of print, and um, Spirits of Europa, which I highly recommend. Um, that you probably could find. The Harry Winkler, I gotta see. I don't think I ever saw anything else by him, which I really like to. Um, okay, guys, this went a lot longer than I anticipated for an off the cuff one. Um, but um, Halloween's coming, my favorite time of year, as I said. Um, and so um, just want to say thanks for, for watching, and sorry it's been a while since I've recorded anything. Uh, I'd say I'm starting to run out of stuff, but, um, you know, I, I wanted to try to keep it in the theme of Halloween, but wasn't really able to do so. So this is the best I can do is bring you in the background and, and, and this guy, too. Okay, I'll be back soon, guys. Take care.